Welcome back to another episode of Bitfinex Talks. I'm your host, Ricardo Martinez. Today, I'm joined by Kurt Nielsen. He's the co-founder of Partesia, a blockchain project which is focused on scalability and also user privacy. Um, Kurt, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Nice to meet you, Richard. Nice to meet you as well. So, Kurt, um, I guess for people that don't know and aren't familiar with the project, can you kind of give us a high-level overview of what Partesia is? Yes, so Patricia is a new layer one blockchain, public blockchain. It's, uh, it's as you mentioned, it's actually uh, uh, it's targeting three, th three, different, uh, three different objectives. So one is scalability. So the basic layer is uh, scalable with uh, independent sharding uh, that actually makes it scalable a bit like a, uh, uh, a bit like uh, cloud computing. Then there's interoperability which is in, in this case means that uh, we actually pay the fees with ex external coins. So the whole bridging and interoperability with other uh, network is native to the network. And then finally, there's uh, privacy in terms of uh, a network that can compute directly on encrypted numbers using uh, software approaches like multi-party computation and fully homomorphic encryption. So that's sort of the... Uh, the three main uh, sort of uh, objectives that we have been solving in the in the, with the network. I guess for our viewers who may not be so technical, can you kind of explain what uh, multi-party computation is and also yeah. uh, what ho homomorphic encryption is? Yes. So so, uh, so multi-party computation uh, is. Uh, is a, a technology where you uh, can compute directly on in encrypted information. So what that means is that uh, you have a distributed system like a, like a blockchain. So you have a number of uh, servers uh, and uh, they sort of receive uh, what is called uh, or it could be secret shared information, uh, uh, which is completely random information. And when they talk together in, in the right way, they can actually compute on these random uh, informations uh, as if it was clear text information. So the properties of this is that the individual nodes have zero knowledge about what they compute. So it's kind of this zero knowledge uh, computation uh, or technologies. So so that's the the MPC and and for multi, fully homomorphic en encryption is where you can can do that on on a single uh, a node. It's a, it's a it's a slower a lot slower than uh, Fully, uh, than multi-party computation, but there is some synergies between having both of these uh, protocols in the same network. Okay, wow, that's super, super interesting. I guess my next question would be, how is Partesia integrating these advanced cryptographic techniques like zero-knowledge proofs and stuff like that, um, and MPC as well, to, to achieve privacy without uh, compromising on scalability or security? Yes, so so it's, that has uh, taken a lot of time to to actually get this right. So uh, so we are a there's a there's basically two layers. So two types of technologies. It's the multi-party computation, and it's a, a, a more a classical but a new type of blockchain that is more scalable and have a, a faster finalization and so on. And, and then we sort of merge these two technologies together, such that when you come into this, you come into a unified infrastructure where you through smart contracts can say, okay, these data is clear text, these data are private, and please do these type of computation with the private data. It might be that you, we are in an advertisement uh, application. You want to convert your private data uh, into a persona that fits the context that you're in and use that persona in the advertisement market. So then that is done encrypted, and you the result is that persona that you send in to through the advertisement, uh, the marketing machinery, and so so that's one example of how you can use the network. And it's it's actually so so this is also the balance here is that it's two separate things. So when you need the privacy, you sort of spin up a cluster of nodes that is doing that uh, MPC computation. So it doesn't affect the scalability of the uh, basic layer, and it also has this, uh, which is very important, the balance between transparency on one hand and privacy on the other. So the smart contract that is instructing the network to do these things and also do the private computation is public. 
and when you do the actual computation is done and uh, done private so you have the insight into what are you doing with the data but you have the privacy when you work with the data okay cool um this privacy is it like user controlled like i i know like certain situations i would want to be private and then in other situations i may want to share my my data um is, is the user the one that controls that yes so, so we're building this basic infrastructure and we have a number of applications that is building services on top of this so it really kind of depends on, on what what is the actual uh, d app uh, that is built on, on top of the network uh, what what makes uh, most sense? If it, is it advertisement? Is it the DID solution? Is it a voting system? Is it a DeFi system? Uh, you you will use these privacy components in different ways, and 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 of course in a, in a way that fits the regulation that uh, that application is working within and jurisdiction as, and and all that. Uh, one example would be uh, a balanced approach could be that you're using the privacy in a DeFi solution. So imagine a Uniswap model where you want to do the swapping and, and do that privately. And you want to do that in order for, for, for no one to front run your, your, your trade or your swap. And you can yeah. do that and then you can put that and, and create consensus around that uh, transaction and reveal the transaction at the end. So then you're using the privacy just to keep that swap private for a, a period of time. And then it's transparent again. So it's it's not about like keeping the trans, uh, transaction private for, forever. It's more like using the privacy in this case to just address front running, uh, which is an issue uh, in, in Uniswap. So I guess, I'm curious, you, you just kind of described um, several different use cases. Like, what is your overall vision for, for Partisia? Like, you see it as like a, a full solution for, for these different use cases? Like, which use cases do you have imagined? Yeah, I think it has a, a lot to offer in the sense that this is a Web3 infrastructure. And then Web3 was, is really about like the bringing the user in control of data and and how they use the internet but but without having a proper measures and how to be in control of your data it's it's kind of difficult to to realize that uh, vision about the web tree and, and this is what what is built in with the this privacy where you can go in you can keep your private data hidden and still put it to work in the internet economy create values so so i think this is this is the real a long-term driver there's also a number of things that we can do with the with the current uh, most used way to to sort of uh, bootstrap a uh, blockchain ecosystem with the DeFi and nfts and stuff like that but but the long run perspective is that here you actually have an infrastructure that really realize the web tree vision that the end users is in control of their data and they can put it to work and uh, with that, you can go in and you can disrupt like the like the biggest engines in Web2 advertisement. We just met, talked a little bit about that, how you could could uh, put your private data to work and, and, and without revealing that. The point is that you are in control of your data. So, so you really decide what, what is done here. Uh, and uh, that, that means that you naturally will get a fair share of the value generated when you put your data to work in, in advertisement. So that is going to uh, disrupt, I mean, the way that uh, that advertisement is done today. So Partizia is leveraging some pretty advanced cryptography, some, some really cutting edge technology. Um, Web3, we've kind of seen like an evolution of a multi-chain ecosystem. There's a bunch of different chains that are using different technologies and they're kind of like EVM compatible or, or IBC compatible. Is Partizia like compatible with Ethereum based chains or, or with uh, Cosmos based chains or, or other Web3? technologies or is yes. it its own isolated ecosystem uh, it's uh, i mean uh, we have what we call interoperability and what we call byoc bring your own coin so that means that uh, you actually we are integrated with uh, with a lot of these network all the evm chains and uh, uh, and other chains uh, 
So you, we have these uh, token, uh, these assets brought into the network and used as means of payment for for on the Patricia blockchain. So, but 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 the but the Patricia blockchain as such uh, is not an EVM uh, chain. It's a, uh, a Rust. It's like a Solana, for example. So it's a, and okay. we, we chose that uh, language because it's uh, it makes it easier for us to build that uh, proper uh, security around using uh, privacy preserving computation technologies. Uh, so uh, and and also the scalability that we need, which was uh, not uh, possible with the EVM chain. Uh, but but still, we know it's it's all about uh, being in there. Being a part of an ecosystem, collaborating, and 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 that's what the BYOC does. So so that Expl explain what BYOC is. That's pretty unique. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know. it is unique, and it's sort of point back to the token economy behind the the network. So bring your own coin. Uh, so so that is that the token that uh, that uh, Patricia is producing is called MPC because we are kind of experts in multi-party computation. So we also call it the the token MPC. In fact, it was one of the founders is uh, of the project is Ivan Dango, who did the the first result in this in the late eighties. Uh, a side wow. note to that. Uh, but but uh, so so uh, yeah, what was the 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 uh, the question here? Um, BYOC. Explain like how it, that works because that's a pretty unique dynamic that I, I haven't yeah. seen anywhere else except for Partesia. So. No, no, I don't think there is any any others. So, so then the MPC token is basically used for staking. So it's kind of an entry barrier to, to run a, a node, and then you you stake to 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 run the different operations. And the different operation is like running the basic consensus protocol, running zero knowledge computation or MPC computation, or running the uh, the BYOC uh, bridges. And and that is uh, that is the the value of the mpc token that it's a staking token and then then you have so that's a, the long run and then you have the byoc for for paying fees so so this is this is at the core separating two main objective which is store of value and means of payment and so we have a stable price for for transaction in in usd using external uh, coins and price oracles to to make that fit usd uh, and then we have the MPC that is not impacting the prices, and 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 that also brings us back to how can we secure that stable prices? It brings us back to that scalability that is built into the layer one, because the, the the scalability is a bit like a, a cloud computing. It's, it's you can spin up a separate a new shard when you have uh, bottlenecks in the network, and uh, they operate completely independent, so you can scale up as many as you want so it's uh, it's really unlimited scalability in that sense without impacting the uh, the, the performance of, of the network uh, and that allows us to to not have a market like a mempool when you have a bottlenecks but spinning up new uh, capacity in the, in the network how how are you guys achieving that like uh, like is it like a DAG, like a directed acyclic graph, or are you guys using proof yeah. of stake? Like how 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 exactly are you achieving the scalability? Yes, so we have a uh, what we call a fast track consensus protocol. It's uh, it's actually at the essence as a BFT style kind of uh, consensus of Byzantine four torrents, a couple probably yeah. most uh, most used way of creating consensus in distributed system. But it, it's it's. Uh, it's uh, using uh, BFT, the full BFT style, only if if the consensus is failing. So it's it's really optimizing the use of BFT. Uh, and whenever you have a transaction, it goes immediately into a block and get uh, and you create consensus and final finalization right after. Uh, so 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 it's it's an optimized and and fast uh, BFT style uh, consensus protocol. Wow, it sounds like you guys are doing some really exciting stuff. To be honest, I, I um, hope so. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I guess, like with the emphasis on privacy, how does Partesia maintain transparency? Like, can you explain how you guys yeah. are are kind of balancing that happy medium? Yeah, I, 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 exactly. So, so uh, I mean, the the MPC uh, token that reproduces is, is a completely a transparent sitting on the transparent ledger. It has nothing to do with a a privacy coin or anything like Monero or Zcash or anything. 
it's the the privacy is a, a, a is really a distributed computer that can compute on private information, and then you can use that in applications in, in different ways, like dressing front running or keeping data hidden in advertisement or whatever the the use case is. Uh, so so the uh, transparency is really from the uh, from having a transparent blockchain, and then you are using that to orchestrate the privacy. Uh, uh, private computations. Uh, so it's it's this balance, and it's it's a I think it's a relevant balance. And if I'm fr I'm from the EU, so there's a lot of regulation being coming out of the EU. We have the GDPR, we have yeah. AI Act, we have Data Act, and we have stuff about uh, uh, you know uh, jurisdiction management and stuff like that. And it's a lot of these regulation points back at, at the uh, at topics around uh, ideal infrastructure with confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and those are actually the the things that we have in 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 the network. So it's 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 and if you look at the AI Act or Data Market Act or uh, these different packages, a lot of this is about accountability, transparency into how the data is used. But when you use data, at least when if they hit the GDPR regulation, you have to address the privacy. So here you have both of these. You have public transparent ledger. You have a smart contract that describes the algorithm. This is how I use your data. But when I use your data, I do it uh, privately. So that is the, the delegate sort of balance between transparency on one hand and, and privacy on the other. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I guess it's my personal opinion that like right now we're kind of, you know, people like to compare crypto to the internet. And right now we're kind of like in the pre uh, SSL or uh, <laughs> encryption era. So like the, the topic of privacy personally for me is like super, super interesting. So it, it's very exciting to see the work that you guys are doing. I guess it's a proof of stake model. Like how many validator nodes are there? Like how decentralized is the network? Um, if somebody yeah. wants to become a validator, how can they do so? Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's an open blockchain. You go in and you you actually have to uh, do a KYC. So there's external KYC provider, you do that. And then you come with that proof and you you sign up as a node operator. So, so why we do that uh, is because we are actually want to know the jurisdiction of the servers. Uh, uh, of the, uh, the uh, of the servers running the network, because that allow us to do jurisdiction management. So then we can do if you want to run these computations we talked about before, and, and and that is EU data. It has to maybe run on EU servers, and you make sure that you select an EU cluster to do that. So so and it so that's one thing. The other thing is that then we can actually have real decentralization. So one node, uh, or one one node operator, one one vote, <laughs> in that sense, and we have about a hundred uh, uh, nodes at the moment. Uh, so so, but it, it it's actually a hundred uh, independent nodes. So it's it's uh, it's it's not like uh, it's really decentralized. Okay, cool. That's and then um, what's what's the response been from from the crypto users themselves? Is there have you seen a lot of excitement around Partizo? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. We see a lot of growth now. Uh, where we uh, are just about to, to bring the uh, make the the MPC token uh, tradable. Uh, the bridging is is uh, coming in. We have DeFi uh, players building solutions uh, that is tapping into this liquidity that is moving into the chain. We have this. Uh, so that is one of these scale up uh, strategies they have. Scale up by DeFi. And the other is the scale up by data, which is pointing back at the integration with uh, MetaMask Snap that is allowing us to securely activate private data and put that into the uh, privacy preserving computations and do voting, do DID, do advertisement, do mark, do uh, data uh, use or data exchange. Uh, also for things like healthcare and, and finance, very complicated. Uh, uh, industries that requires a, a lot of uh, privacy from time to time to work with these data and also to be compliant. Uh, but but with that net with this network with all of these uh, features, the confidentiality, the 
uh, integrity and the availability. You actually have what you need in order to to address all the requirements that you have in these uh, industries. You mentioned the MPC token is a staking token, but right now in in your last response, you mentioned something about voting. Does it also have a governance uh, capacity to the token? Yes, I mean, it's a, a relatively little, but the node operators, they are they are mostly running the, the governance and uh, around uh, any changes in the software and, and so on. So there's opportunities to, to build more in uh, more governance into the network. Uh, or to to uh, to work with, uh, I think the voting is more like at the application levels. So also working with uh, decentralized atomic organizations and the DAO on top of the network is is, is an obvious thing. And uh, that's uh, about making collective decisions. So maybe you need to have a vote or a mechanism to make a, a decision as a group or or maybe you need to, to sometime also, uh, and that you might want to run that privately. Uh, so, so that is directly part of the network, these private voting. Uh, or you maybe you want to do some kind of uh, collaboration and, and share information and find some uh, some uh, some uh, some shared uh, statistics, and you can do that with the network. Uh, so I think all the tools. I actually have a background as an economist. Uh, uh, I'm an economist by trade and worked with designing markets and all of that stuff. And and and, and when you do that, it's it's really about these things. It's either you do work with it privately data or you work with it uh, public. And that's what the infrastructure does. So you can construct all of these market mechanisms with this network that could uh, facilitate people to to collaborate together, whether they run some kind of uh, pooled. Uh, uh workforce or it's uh, that they work on on uh, on mining or i don't know what they could do in in, in collaboration but the, you here you have the tools to to actually advance these uh, dao applications so you guys are an open source project uh i imagine there's an ecosystem of dApps and things being constructed on top of partesia if someone is a developer or they want to get involved in the project like how could they do so Yes, I mean, definitely go into the homepage, uh, uh, go to the socials, uh, go in, into Discord, uh, Telegram, uh, mostly Discord actually. That's where most people are organized and, and start interacting with the uh, with the network. There's a there's a grant programs. There are uh, uh, developers uh, ready to uh, ready to help people uh, building on the on the network. So uh, it's just uh, Go there, jump in, start uh, working with the people around the network, and uh, it should be ready and available. And all the documentation tells you how to get started, uh, both as a part of, as a node operator, but also as a, as a as a D app uh, uh, developer on the network. Thank you for giving that information out. Um, let's talk about the roadmap. You mentioned that the token is about to become tradable. Um, what what other milestones do you guys have envisioned for 2024? Oh uh, yes, so we have a, a lot of uh, innovations uh, uh, that is coming up. So, but we talked about these three uh, main properties of the network: the scalability, the interoperability, and the privacy. And we are uh, working on improving these features uh, uh, in the roadmap. Different sort of technical components that is built into improving them. And, and then, uh, but most of the work is put into enabling different types of applications. Uh, so it's within the class of DeFi, within the class of use of data, mostly. So for the DeFi, we have the a new approach to how to uh, how to run DeFi and how to run automated market maker that uh, allow you to do even more interoperability, secure prices on liquidity pools that is completely separate. So you can have one sitting on Solana, you can have one on Patricia and one on Ethereum, and you can still work as as if it was on a, on a single uh, blockchain, uh, these uh, uh, these liquidity pools. So that's one part. That's also about the front running addressing that. Also, okay. another product for the for the DeFi is the custody solution. So using the technology, the MPC, in, in fact, the team behind was also building the first uh, commercial company around uh, using MPC for custody solutions. Uh, and, and we have that those protocol part of the network. So we're actually turning the entire network into a cost on-chain custody solution. Uh, wow, using these technologies. that's big. 
it, it, that's actually pretty big. And it, it's not just about small clusters of, of uh, multi-sig tree fire nodes. It's, uh, we talked about 100 nodes in the network. So it's all of these involved in, in uh, using, running the world's largest, largest uh, cluster of MPC computation where they produce collectively uh, signing materials and that is used to, to uh, run different things and uh, in the uh, around the cost of discipline around the bridging and all that i guess i have a question about security like if you're bridging and stuff like that we've seen a lot of hacks kind of take place with these cross chain yeah. bridges um mm -hmm. how are you guys addressing like the security uh, aspect of it yeah, since we chose that bold move, I guess, uh, from the beginning that we wanted to do the BYOC in order to facilitate collaboration, we wanted to basically take the what is the most valuable thing from from an external uh, network, that's a token, and we use that token and boost that as a means of payment on our chain. So that I, th I think that's a perfect way to collaborate <laughs> with another network. Uh, but that also meant mean that we need to work with these bridges in a very secure way because it's native to the network. So we, we spent a lot of time building a probably the most secure uh, bridge in, in the industry. It's a fully collateralized bridging. It's, uh, it's run in, in, in epochs. So when you, when you, when you sort of uh, use the entire network selected group to run the bridge, then they run the bridge in an epoch. When at the end of that epoch, uh, and the epoch ends when you don't have any more collateralized uh, collateralization left in the in that group. You do a double bookkeeping system and check out everything, sign off on 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 what has been doing in that period, and then there's a small uh, then there's a dispute period, and the token uh, that was used as collateral was released is released again, and in the meantime you have another group running the next epoch. So that actually gives us a very secure bridge, uh, the only one in the industry that is coll fully collateralized or uh, just collateralized. I don't think there's other collateralized uh, bridge and it's uh, not accumulating risk because it's run in these epoch. You have double bookkeeping in there to settle everything before you run into the, to the next epoch. And, and you have, the, have two levels of uh, MPC uh, signing off uh, on uh, selecting these uh, nodes and running the uh, epoch uh, with multi-sig across uh, uh, the nodes. Okay. So three basic measures has been put into this. And I could keep talking about this because this, this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's very important. I mean, uh, bridging, uh, as you mentioned, is, has been uh, been some of the biggest biggest uh, hacks in, in the or security breaches in the, in the industry. So, uh, so it's has been important for us to try to solve this uh, the right way. Yeah, no, I, I understand completely. Um, I guess my next question would be, what haven't I asked you that is important for our, our viewers to understand about Partizia? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I mean, uh, please just uh, come in and, and have a look at, at what we're doing. Uh, the, t the team behind has been uh, is is really like one of the top people, uh, top group in, in cryptography uh, that has been involved in this uh, as since the late eighties for for the most part. One of the co-founders I mentioned before also put name to the hash function, the uh, Merkle Danko hash function. It's even Danko. We have other uh, professors that has been putting name to, to new uh, new cryptographic tools. Uh, so so we really have a very strong research group, and and we as a group we have worked together for for 15 years building commercial grade software uh, based on, on on sound research, peer reviewed research. Uh, so so uh, and collectively you have a group that has been, that has been producing more than a thousand research papers and a group that has built like. 60 plus uh, uh, commercial applications and it's it's all what we are putting into to this uh, this project uh, so we are here for the long run we believe that we have a, a a strong network that can really change how we how the, the narrative i think around uh, the web tree as as uh, as a uh, as a network yeah, no, it's super exciting what you guys are doing. Like I said, I, I'm super interested in privacy projects. I feel like um, blockchains that 
harness privacy like in smart contracts and, and web3 use cases like this are going to be the future of, of blockchain in general so um like i said it's super exciting to see what you guys are doing at particia i'm a big fan and um i guess thank you for coming on the show uh is there any um final words you want to say and then also could you give like your social media contacts so that anybody that's interested can follow the project Yes, uh, please uh, go into particiablockchain.com and and check out the uh, the socials at the at the footer at the bottom. You click in there and you'll see, learn a lot of uh, things about the uh, of the uh, of the network and and find a way around uh, from 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 there. Uh, and I think that's the the simplest and easiest way to to just get uh, engaged with with the network. It's it's all in there and ready to to jump into. So uh, I mean, it's a pleasure to be here and. Uh, Thank you for inviting me. Indeed. Thank you for coming on the show, Kurt. And um, good luck with everything. Uh, Thank you. Thank moving you. forward. Excellent.